Thanks for watching another episode of Dreamcatcher. I have something a little different today. Bill is here with me, Bill Woodson, and we're going to show you a Catch It segment that he recently did. It's about the coat of many colors in a way you have never heard it, I promise <laughs> you. <laughs> and I know if you watch the program, you're not surprised coming from Bill, but it's just, it's very eye-opening and stay with it, stay with it. I was walking the other day and asking God about this and about that. And how did He see things? Now, you remember the scripture said, His ways are not ours. Yet we try to cause Him to fit in our thinking. Well, as I was walking, praying and seeking God's face, the Lord spoke to me. And these are the words he spoke to me. I want you to cross over. Well, as you can done tell, your mind thinks, oh, over on the other side. Well, that's what my mind went to. Over to the other side? Well, Lord, I know that there's the scripture about let you told your disciples, let us cross over to the other side. And I've heard that message and I was telling the Lord that, talking to him, as just like I'm talking to you. And he spoke to me and said, uh-uh, that is not what I said. That's what you heard, but that's not what I said. <laughs> I went kind of like I am now. Uh, excuse me? He said, crossing over is a way that most people like to think from here to there. But he said, I want to cross how you think. I want to cross it up. Because the first shall be the last. And the last shall be the first. Boy, if that ain't totally wrong. Don't understand it, do you? Well, remember Joseph's dream? And you remember how that all went? He told his family and his family didn't like him, his brothers. Now th stop and think about that just a second. Are you with me? Stay on my page. His family turned against him. Now, you're talking about crossed up. Wouldn't you think that if you told your family what God showed you or the dream you had, they would support you, not want to kill you? Crossed up your thinking. Well, when God spoke to me like that, I went, oh, good Lord. Crossed over? See, we always think it's from here to there. And God said, when I'm here, it is there. I've done got it made a way for you. You think I'm making a way for you and I've already made the way for you. And I went, boy, now that's crossed up thinking. Well, when God spoke to me like that, I got digging deep in. Do you remember Joseph's coat of many colors? Oh, we've heard that message thousands of times, haven't we? The coat of many colors. I believe there was a singer made a song about the coat of many colors. Well, one was mama made it. The other one was daddy made it. The coat of many colors for Joseph. Well, after telling the dreams, I went, well, okay, God. He said, did his coat start his journey? And I went, <laughs> yeah, it did. And he thought it was something to wear to be proud of. Others didn't even like his coat. In so much that his family throwed him in a pit because they got mad at him because all he talked about was what the dreams he had. 
And if I'm not mistaken, they told him the interpretation of the dream. He was just giving the dream. Well, as you see, the coat then got dipped in blood. Took to his father and said he died. Well, that was, that was messed up. Any way you look at it. But it also represented the love he had for his son. I didn't, I didn't put that together. Because his brothers knew that if they dipped it in blood and showed it to dad, dad wouldn't be searching after it because after you see the blood applied, that means death was there. And if you notice, through all the scripture, it never once said daddy went out and searched for him. <laughs> Not one time can you find where his dad got up and said, well, I got to find his body. So let's go out and find it. The scripture said he was even grieved. That his son was lost. Well, what a crossover. We as parents, wouldn't you, if someone told you, I've got to go find them. Yeah. Well, it just didn't work that way. And then, remember, he got sold into slavery. Sometimes you've got to be a servant to what God, hmm, what God asked of you. And it's not always fun. Most of the time I find out in the Christian walk, <laughs> it's confusing. That's the reason we walk by faith, not by sight. Because God is the author and the finisher of our faith. Our faith is in Him. Well, as it went on, He went into Potiphar's house. What was the number one thing that got Him in trouble? He didn't do anything wrong. His family disowned him, lied about him, went into slavery. Potiphar looked at him and said, I see something about him's different. Remember, we're supposed to stand out. We're supposed to cross over from our situation to who we are. Quit waiting for it to happen later on in life. And I went, good Lord. What a crossover. Well, journey goes on. Get ready. It's about to get good for you. He's in Potiphar's house. He's doing everything right. Matter of fact, so good that everything according to God's scripture, it prospered that he put his hand to. And it was for Potiphar. He was still imprisoned. He was a slave to Potiphar. But he was a good slave because, guess what? Potiphar put him over his entire house. <laughs> now think about this just for a second. You're talking about crossed over? Potiphar's wife <laughs> wanted him, <laughs> which was, in that era of time, pretty much custom. What was the number one thing that made him have to go to jail? Do you remember what it was? I hope you're thinking. It was his coat. <laughs> because the woman went to Joseph and said, I want you, I want you. To let. He said, I can't do that. I can't do that for my God and I can't do it for my master. He's put me over the entire house except you. Uh-uh, ain't doing it. And she grabbed his coat or his garment, whichever makes you feel good. I call it a coat. He was wearing it. And when her husband came in, she said, look, here's his coat. He did do this. Wow. A coat started it. A coat was represented. And then he went into the jail cell. But here's the good thing. It wasn't just a normal jail cell. I'm talking about crossed over. It was the king's personal jail cell that he put his people he didn't like in. Well, guess what? He still had God on him because the journey was what God wanted. It didn't look good. It didn't feel good. But he was still God. 
And God had something in store for him that he couldn't see. He had to walk it out. And that is what crossed him over. And sometimes that's what crosses us up. Wow, did I say that? Well, I'm trying to make this sermon into a sermonette. But you, you get the gist. And then guess what? He's in there for two years and everything he touched his hand to there prospered. I'd like for you to take a minute and think just a second. And look back over your life and see what God had blessed you in and you didn't see it as a blessing and complain to God and all the time while you was doing it was prospering. Mm. Or maybe it wasn't prospering. Ooh, crossed up, <laughs> crossed over. Well, there you go. There's some more of that I was thinking on when I was doing this walk. And then all of a sudden, he tells, he interprets two dreams to Pharaoh's servants that he was in there and they had dreams. Now, we won't go into those dreams because sometimes when you tell those dreams, people get all scared. We won't go there. We, we're not here to make you scared. We're here to encourage you. Lift you up. Let you know God has stuff for you. Well, one of them went back to Pharaoh. And for some time, he forgot Joseph interpreting his dream in jail. And the Lord gave Pharaoh a dream. Now, wait a minute. You're talking about crossed up. All my life, I've been told Egypt was a place of bad. It represented bondage. Well, I don't know about you, but Joseph's journey <laughs> landed him second in the kingdom. <laughs> Crossed up, eh, just giving you a heads up. Well, as you know, Pharaoh had a dream that no one can interpret. Now, isn't that something? Out of all the interpreters, matter of fact, he brought all of his soothsayers, all his dream interpreters, come and stood right, stood right in front of him and could not tell him the interpretation. Matter of fact, he got real mad, wanted to kill one or two of them. And one of them that was in the, back in the house of Pharaoh, he said, hey, hey, hey I remember somebody. <laughs> Bring to your remembrance. i I'm still working on that crossover. And then all of a sudden, Pharaoh said, well, bring him. And here's the thing. This time, he didn't need a coat. This time, he needed a king to bring him out and ask for him. And the king stipulated, before you bring him to me, clean him up. Because <laughs> what I'm about to put on his neck ain't a coat. Should he interpret it? Well, as you know, he interpreted it. And everything that Joseph walked through prepared him for the king's presence. And everything you're walking through is preparing you for in, to be in the presence of the king. Oh, Lord, that, that's, that's shouting ground. Well, he interprets it and he puts a ring on his finger and a gold ring necklace about his neck right and you go well that's got to be it more that was it that was it you know God was so good well he had to work for seven years of plenty and seven years of bad it, according to the interpretation of the dream for Pharaoh just like he did for Potiphar except this time he marries an Egyptian I'm going to mess with your mind. <laughs> I'm going to mess. I thought you weren't supposed to be unequally yoked. Crossover. <laughs> did, did you think about that? No, calm down. Calm down. It gets better. Well, sure enough, they have kids. So he's a. Israelite went to Egypt 
married an Egyptian, and it was in God's plan. Oh. <laughs> I, know, I know you're thinking, I can't answer all those questions, but send them in. We'll help you as, as much as we can. And then guess what? It was time, dad and brothers all come, and it was a reunion, and, and they got mad, and they thought that they was going to get killed because Joseph's dream had come to pass. Remember the story? Well, he hugged her neck, started crying, said, listen, what you meant for evil, God took it for my good. Don't worry about it. I'm still going to feed you, even though you didn't believe it. <laughs> crossed up, crossed over. Yeah, God will take that which seems to be hopeless and turn it into good, as you and I both know. Only the Lord could. Well, as time progressed, Joseph wanted to have his children blessed. <gasps> From Egypt? They were reared in Egyptian understanding, and yet God's going to bless them through Joseph's father that never come and looked for him? Crossed up. Because God's ways are not our ways. It's His way. Or I like to say it this way, the highway. <laughs> well, as he brought his children to his father that was about to die, you know the story. Well, he brought them to him and his eyes were dim. His dad's eyes were dim. He couldn't see and he was kind of feeble. Get ready to die. So he brought his children to him. So his dad, that rejected his dream 20-some years earlier, to bless his kids that was reared in Egyptian ways, to get a blessing. And when he did, what did Joseph's dad do? He crossed his arms. When he went to bless them and pronounce a blessing, in so much that Joseph got upset and said, no, 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 you got the wrong hand on the wrong son. He said, hey, hey I'm, I'm obeying God. I'm going to cross up what should be and make it what it needs to be. Because the first should never serve the second unless God wants him to. And the blessings were pronounced. Wow, we won't go there. But until next time, that's just a little sermonette. That's probably about a three week revival <laughs> condensed down to probably three or four minutes, maybe five. But I hope it encourages you because even though you may have crossed up your thinking, God has a way to finish up and cross out what you've messed up and he'll bless in spite of your mess because that's what God does if we keep God in our forefront and what we're doing, and we always put Him first, not second. Till next time, <laughs> dream. That dream come to fruition for Him, it will come to fruition for you. And sometimes, like I said previously, it's not even for you. It was for them, and God kept Him in the crossover. Catch your dream. Catch your dream. And I saw a flash of the dream. And I stopped and I said, oh my God, this is what Ms. Robin was talking about. And I just felt the presence of the Lord all over me. Um, right then and I was like, this is what she was talking about. So I had to email you because I just, God is so wonderful. You helped me in that I, I did not know that at that time yeah. but your interpretation that dream flashed and the Holy Spirit just fell like yep this is what I'm talking about I told you this was not anything you had heard before wow yeah that, that well, was revelation well that's what happens when you set a time aside for God and say God feed me yeah now I I'm not like everybody else. As you, <laughs> really? 
as you just <laughs> seen, I'm not like everybody else. I, I, I don't, I'm not a follower. Right, right. And to him that knoweth much, according to God's work, much is required. Mm -hmm. Because you, I hunger and thirst after righteousness. Right. right. I, and a little sup, just don't do me. You know, I told someone like this one time, Robin. There's water for the ankles. We find it in God's Word. Water for the knees. Water to wade in. Water to swim in. I want water to snorkel in. Oh. <laughs> I want water to scuba dive deep. in. Yeah, deep. I want what there's called an atmospheric suit that you can go to 2,000, 3,000 feet below. I'm that guy. Yeah. And I want to shed light mm -hmm. that it's the same water there as it is at the top. Yeah. It's the same God. I'm sorry. I'll, as you can see. You're on a roll. <laughs> I'm on a roll. I, I love for God to converse with me, mm -hmm. to set and sup, as some would say. Yeah. And so, with that, then it started with the coat and it ended with the coat. Yeah, it, it, it's unreal. Yeah, because yeah, when God gave it to me, He said, "I want to cross up their thinking." It did. It did mine. I want to cross up their thinking, and I said, "God, you just you just you blowed my mind." Yeah. He yeah. said, "Now that's when I can show you what I can get accomplished in you if you'll let me operate you." I tell you what I enjoy too. When you read the word, you know, usually you're reading either a segment or some people read it straight through. Straight through. But it's almost like different stories. Here's this young boy telling a dream uh -huh. and all this other stuff happens. And then later right. there's, you know, the whole, well, the blessing of, of the children. But I don't typically read all of that as one person's life. Yes. And to hear it all in one setting <laughs> was like, like, wow. Yeah. 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 Because that's God's word. The scripture says, line upon line, precept upon precept, right. here a little and there a little. And someone helped me with this one time in reading God's word and understanding. He said, have you ever seen a cake before it was baked? You wouldn't eat it. Because it don't look nothing like what it looks like when you're starting it. Right. I mean, I like eggs much as anybody. But when they crack it and it's in there, it's like, uh, if they just could get that egg out and fry it a little bit, I could eat that. <laughs> and then they get stuff, mm -hmm. and then it mixes all up. And when I look at it, I go, <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I, no, you go ahead. And I've even had people say, taste it. Some cooks taste it before it's cooked. <laughs> we used to lick the batters. <laughs> <laughs> no. Of course, that's me. And then all of a sudden, because then it gets put in the right place at the right temperature. Mm -hmm. No. But that's all the process. Yeah. So when you sit down and you go, happy birthday to you. <laughs> And it comes out and goes, that is not how that looked yesterday or last night yeah, or a while ago. An hour ago, yeah. You go, and everybody eats of it. And some eat of it and go, oh, that was a horrible cake. I don't know. Oh, good God. And some eat it and go, that's the best cake I believe I've ever eaten. Mm -hmm. It depends on where you're at in God and what you expect. Yeah. There's, well, it just keeps coming, Robin. <laughs> We're going to somewhere shut this off. <laughs> we only have a 30-minute show. <laughs> Maybe next time. Wow. Yeah. It was awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank, Thank you me. for allowing me to be here. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. I, I want to encourage you to read the Word for yourself or listen to it in headsets. Or, or you know, have, there's so many ways. There's no excuse to not hearing the Word today. Right. There's so many ways. So however you receive it, Amen. I encourage you to do that because... Amen. Bill's not the only one who can receive revelation. Amen. You can too. Uh, how, standing at the door knocking. Let, this is how I used it. Someone said wisdom was crying in the street. I just opened the door. Yeah. And Jesus said he was the door. Well, if he's the door and his wisdom is beyond mine and crosses everything up with me, then guess what? 
God, your wisdom, show it to me. He's standing at the door knocking. Amen. Are so you going to let him in? Open the door. <laughs> <laughs> open the door. Thanks for watching. Live Life Loves Way with Pastor Johan McGregor. What the Lord showed me in, in, in my dream in a basement, it, I saw myself in a basement deep, dark basement, and I knew this was evil. This was not good. And I saw, like generals, was, was Satan's um, headquarters, if you will, where they plan and strategize, and, and he and his imps were planning the demise of people. And, I, and in my dream, I thought, who, who would that be? Who would be on their, on their hit list? Who, who's the ones they target? Who's the ones, uh, you know, if, you, if you're going to plan and, and they had maps and things drawn out, how to, how to bring down. Number one, I saw people who preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's his number one enemy. If you declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, he wants to shut you up. Pastors, teachers, evangelists. How many know I've talked to evangelists that said since March, they haven't been busy. Doors have shut. They, can't, they have to find other jobs. How many know that's the work of the enemy, shutting the word of God to go forward? Emptying our churches. How many know that's an enemy that wants to do that? And so we pray that this thing would stop in the name of Jesus. This boa constrictor that wants to constrict blood flow. How many know when you talk about blood flow, it is, is, it, there's life in the blood. Restricting. Breathing. And we know in the natural that's what that virus is doing. But how many know he wants to squeeze the life out of God's people? And we can't praise, we can't worship, we can't do the thing that brings victory in our lives. And they want to shut it down. Oh my goodness. May the Lord open our hearts and our eyes that we will see. We will see clearly the plan of the enemy. You can't say, well, look, it's all over the, look what the, the news is saying and that is saying. Look past that. Ask the Holy Spirit to open the understanding of your heart and your mind. The eyes of your understanding needs to be open. Because if it's blind, you'll, you'll go with the crowd. You'll, do, you'll go with whatever they tell you. But it's the people of God who knows, who understands, who has revelation knowledge. Join Pastor Johan at Love's Way Church Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m.